and this is biological. Testosterone is a, uh, a hormone that if given to women, women become more aggressive, and this is something that has been uh, confirmed in Western uh, medicine. So I think that, that uh, males by their nature have aggressive tendencies. If they're not tempered uh, mm -hmm. by good upbringing, by their mothers, by humanization, and by an understanding of the awesome task and responsibility of being in a human relationship, whether it be family, uh, uh, in terms of a son towards the parents, the parents towards the children, or a husband towards the wife. How do you think uh, women internalize that? How do you think that Muslim women will manifest that in their roles today? Well, I think w women all over, not just... I, w Muslim women are women yes. that happen to have uh, that adjective, that they, they belong to a faith, but, but they're first and foremost, uh, uh, they're human beings. Correct. Um, and so I think that you'll find throughout uh, the planet, you will find very similar uh, pathologies manifested by human beings mm -hmm. and there are certainly Americas filled with very dysfunctional relationships mm -hmm. uh, women here are, are, are grossly abused uh, the the number one cause of murder uh, amongst uh, women in the United States is from their husbands or their boyfriends uh, that uh, I mean you see this so I, I don't think you can say Muslims have any monopoly on the mistreatment of women, mm -hmm. I think globally we have a problem. Uh, the, the problem in Islam occurs when Muslims do not adhere to the traditions of Islam, to the teachings of Islam, and, 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 and vice versa. Uh, when, when they do adhere, you will see, in fact, extraordinary harmony occur in the human relationships because very clear guidelines have been given in terms of gender relationships. So you're saying that Muslims have themselves to blame in I, a way that... First and foremost, yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I think that what happens, because human beings, uh, it, uh, by nature, we have certain flaws in our, in our thinking, and that's why logic was traditionally taught as an actual science in order to, to, to redress mm -hmm. uh, flaws. One of the flaws uh, of people is cause and effect. Um, people will often mistake, because they see certain effects, mm -hmm. uh, they'll mistake the cause. It's, it's difficult to determine real cause. Now what will happen if you, if you look at the Muslim world, uh, as a non-Muslim, when they look at the Muslim world, and they see the, the dysfunctional nature of Muslim societies, they assume the cause is Islam. Okay. Whereas for a Muslim looking at the Muslim world, and understanding his religion, mm -hmm. he knows, in fact, the cause is the abandonment of Islam. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that these people are no longer practicing Islam. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's, that's the important thing, is to understand that, you know, the, the Arabs have a beautiful principle in the science of Bayan, which is one of the sciences of, uh, of language. They say, الْحُكُمُ عَلَى شَيْءٍ that before we can judge a thing, we have to understand it in all of its variables. And uh, we're filled with a world of prejudice. Uh, people are constantly prejudging. Uh, the average American will make remarks about Islam. Uh, they'll think that they're liberal, uh, humanistic, uh, unbiased, unprejudiced. And yet you ask them what they think of Islam, oh, that's a stupid religion, it's a backward religion, it's oppressive to women. Have they ever read the Qur'an? No. Have they ever read a tradition of the Prophet Muhammad? No. So what are they basing that on? They're basing it on just observing Muslim societies. Well, if we observe Christian societies, mm -hmm. have we seen turn the other cheek no. applied in the West in the last 2,000 years? Was turn the other cheek applied in Iraq? Mm -hmm. Right. The, the, the biblical foundation of the Torah according to Rabbi Hilal, who's one of the greatest Jewish rabbis, is that the entire message of the Torah, which is the Jewish book, is love God and love thy neighbor as thyself. Do we see the Jews practicing that towards their Palestinian neighbors? Does that mean that the Torah is invalid as a book? because of what the Jews are doing? Does that mean the, the gospel is invalid as a book because of what the Christians are doing? But unfortunately, uh, people apply uh, logic outside of themselves mm -hmm. uh, that they like, and then they uh, refuse to apply it on their own selves. Let's talk a little bit about your analogy of mercy and justice. Uh, 
you discussed uh, that you see mercy characteristic uh, to women and justice more characteristic or symbolic of men. Can you expand on that? Well, I, I, I think if you look in the world, uh, you will find that this is one of the paradoxes of the world, of the dilemmas of the world, is on the one hand we honor virtue as a, a religious virtue, and on the other hand we honor justice as a moral virtue. Mm -hmm. uh, if we look at mercy as, as a religious virtue, it's very difficult for us to have justice when we bring mercy into. As some say, like Shakespeare, that, 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 that mercy must temper justice. In other words, be just, but have that mercy temper the justice to prevent it from becoming harm or becoming uh, a harshness. Uh, in, in the Christian uh, world, mercy is at the root of the, of the Christian message, this idea of mercy. I think in Islam, the, the, the woman is the embodiment of mercy. The word in Arabic for mercy, rahma, is, is derived from the word for womb. Mm -hmm. And so the understanding of the Muslims have always been that the source of mercy in the world is the womb. It is the womb. It's the blood bonds that, that, that bond us as Adamic people, that we're from Bani Adam, we're children of Adam, and therefore we should have compassion for all human beings, irrespective of their race, their creed, their color. And at the same time, uh, we need to have justice in the world uh, in order for, their, uh, f for things to work in the marketplace. So uh, f my cosmological understanding in Islam is that a woman represents symbolically the, 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 the virtue of justice in the world and the man represents, uh, uh, of mercy, and the man represents justice. And these are the two hands mm -hmm. that God has given human beings, the left and the right hand. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they're to work together. This is, this is how things are done in the world. So the relationship between men and women is a relationship that's complementary. It's not an equal relationship, and I think this is where people have a real problem, because equality is a mathematical concept. You don't find equality in the world. You find equality in mathematics. But as far as worship in Allah, equality is the same in His eyes as far as... Uh, no, there's no equality in worship, and I'll give you an example. Uh, two people pray. Mm -hmm. One of them is sincere in his prayers, and the other is not. But outwardly, they looked exactly the same. They're not equal. I'm, I'm and the Quran, in. for instance, says, uh, are they equal, those who know and those who don't know? They're not equal. We're not living in a world of equality. And I think this is one of the modern misconceptions of the world, this lie to try to create this so-called egalitarian society. There has never on this planet been an egalitarian society. Human beings are not equal. They're not equal in talent and gifts. The only place where they are equal is before the law. That is the only place. If, if a rich man and a poor man come before a judge, that judge has to treat them the same before the law. If a male or a female comes before a judge, that man must treat them equal before the law. 